Hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you all today to the presentation of the George Baraday Award. My name is Supriya Bailey, and I'm the president of CIES. And before I turn things over to our presenters and our awardees, I want to extend a deep appreciation to all our volunteers in the society on our awards subcommittee. Every year, CIES gives out a number of awards to deserving recipients in a number of different categories. Each award subcommittee works tirelessly to identify the best candidates from those who are nominated. This work would not happen without their participation, for which I am grateful, but it also depends on the hard work of the chair of the awards committee, who handles all the organization, selection of chairs, and logistics for everything, including coordinating with our fantastic team at the OED. This year, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Kara Janigan, who's been an extraordinary chair for the awards committee, and I'm grateful for all her work. When she's not buried in awards committee work, Dr. Janigan is an international education consultant and visiting scholar at the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education at the University of Toronto. Dr. Janigan has spent nearly two decades specializing in issues of gender and education as a curriculum developer, teacher, teacher educator, evaluator, and researcher. She is currently the principal investigator for a knowledge and innovation exchange project under the auspices of the Global Partnership for Education that's being undertaken in countries such as Ghana, Honduras, and Nicaragua. The project is called Improving Literacy for Children Through the Support of Community Networks. Kara has written five book chapters on gender and education. She is a tremendous scholar and leader in CIES, and I'm grateful for her participation on this committee and invite her to get us started. Thank you very much, Supriya. And uh, it's my honor now to um, introduce you to the George Barry Day Award and our co-chair, who will then announce the winners and introduce them. So the George Baraday Award for the best article in Comparative Education Review. It was, the first committee was formed in 1980 to review articles published in Comparative Education Review. The mandate was to review all articles published during the preceding year for their importance in shaping the field, analytic merit, policy impl implications, concern for theoretical constructs, and implications for future research. The award was first granted in 1981, has been granted every year since then. So now it is my pleasure to introduce the chair for the George Baraday subcommittee. Keita Takayama is a professor and director for the Global Education Office in the Graduate School of Education, Kyoto University, Japan. Previously, he taught at the School of Education at the University of New England, Australia for over 11 years. Much of his research explores the globalization of education policy and knowledge from a decolonial, post-colonial perspective. He is currently co-editing two journals, the Asia Pacific Journal of Teacher Education and Discourse, Studies in the Cultural Politics of Education. He is also an advisory board member for a number of international journals in the areas of comparative and international education education policy, and sociology of education, including comparative education review. In 2011, Keita won the George Baraday Award. So I'm, welcome Keita and thank you for all your hard work and your committee's hard work. Thanks very much, Cara, for your kind introduction. Uh, it's, been, it's been great to work with you. So the fact that the CIES is being held uh, much earlier than usual in, in 2023, has certainly made our committee work uh, difficult. Uh, we had much less time to read the papers and rank them and come together as a committee to discuss and select the best paper out of nearly 30 papers published in CER, Comparative Education Review, in 2022. So no doubt, it is arguably one of the most time-consuming committees that you can ever serve for CIES. If someone approaches you for this task, I advise you to be a bit careful before you say yes. But all kidding aside, let us sincerely thank the committee members who kindly agree to do this work with me. And they are Yam Pin Fan, uh, National Institute of Education, Singapore, Amrit Tapa, uh, University of Pennsylvania, United States, Nisha, uh, Nisha Tapliel, 
uh, University of Newcastle in Australia, and Nelly Piatoeva, uh, Tempera University, Finland. Without their, without their commitment and support, I would not have been standing here to present the award today. Uh, picking one best article out of the pile was certainly difficult, but it was also unsettling to us, to be honest with you, because the papers are very, very different from one another. What literature are we familiar with? What kind of epistemological assumptions we are prepared to embrace naturally shape our respective uh, preferences? In the end, we came to a consensus about the paper that I'm going to announce, but it is important to recognize the impossibility of choosing the best paper and the kind of violence this academic practice might cause. So I'm saying this not at all to undermine the value of the award and the quality of the paper that we have selected, but simply to point out the deeply problematic nature of selecting one best paper. Uh, different compositions of the committee under a different chairperson might have selected a different article than the one we have. So let's think of George Beardy Award as an opportunity to celebrate the wonderful scholarship published in CER, Comparative Education Review. So first, let's start with an honorable mention, which goes to the following paper, Representations of Humans, Climate Change, Environmental Degradation in School Textbooks in Ghana and Malawi by Susan Ress, Nancy Kendall, Sophie Fredson Ridnor, and Ya Operebia and Omar Pofo. This was another very conceptual, conceptually solid, an empirically convincing paper that deals with a topic that is of most significance today. So congratulations to the authors. And this year's George Beardy Award goes to making relatives, the poetics and the politics of a trans indigenous teacher collective by Macy, Skanda, uh, Skanda, Skanda Kokeneu, uh, Pantiwa, Tichimpa and Kamarat Pinawana and Alison Lin. I'd like to give my heartfelt congratulations to the authors. Making Relatives was written by educators and researchers who have been deeply involved in the establishment and the management of an indigenous school in Northern Thailand, which adopted an indigenous educational model from Mexico called Tutoria. The piece is not only beautifully written, wonderfully rich in its contextualization and empirical details, but also admirably creative in its operationalization of concepts, conceptual tools and drawn from interdisciplinary literature around story work and social poetics. The committee members unanimously appreciated the sense of hope that the paper communicates through this fascinating trans-indigenous design research and how the paper helps us break a new ground in existing scholarship on education policy movements. But of course the paper, though we think it is the best of 2022, is not perfect. Some of, some of us felt that the notion of making relatives remains rather under-conceptualized. It feels that it, it is left there as a metaphorical expression as opposed to a carefully conceptualized tool that would have given further depth to the discussion. We offer this critique because we enjoy your work so much and because we think and none of us are perfect and we can always learn to make things better. So once again, heartfelt congratulations to the authors. Abuja, um, Gamsia, thank you so much for those remarks. Um, Dr. Keita Takayama, um, and, and to Dr. Kara and Dr. Supraya, um, it's been such a, a joy to, um, to, to, to be here and, and to um, both uh, feel the, the weight of, of the social gravity of the award, um, both the violences and the joy um, that, it, that it comes with. So I appreciate um, just the way that um, the, the framing of the award has 
has has been introduced in the session. And so we're we're we're, we're so grateful um, for the opportunity to share our work. Um, and I think for us, this is evidence that the field um, sees the power of Indigenous young peoples and families in Northern Thailand. Um, that you see the red teachers, um, the beauty and the brilliance of, of this collective. And for that, we are deeply grateful. Um, also want to express that um, living on Dakota, um, Ho-Chunk and Iowa lands here, that my own understanding and uh, of making relatives as, as, as we think about conceptualizing this in, in deeper ways um, has been really influenced by star knowledge and star teachings and relationalities with, with water and, 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 and sky stories. And so this is a collaboration of, of some of the strongest women I know and I love. Um, and so on the team, I'll briefly quickly introduce them. We have Kun Tsukanda Konkeo. We have Kun Pantiwa Te Chumpa, fellow learning designers at the school. Ajahn Amonrat Pinwana, the visionary academic head who is now the principal of Sasat Siksa School, um, and the woman that began it all, my mom, uh, Alison Ling, as well. Uh, we also have Ku Joy and uh, Neti Pong, the, the teacher and the student that were featured in the paper here with us um, as observers and just wanted to uplift them in their work. So as a collective, we've been concerned about human maturation in the Vine DeLorean and, and Megan Bang sense and what it means to live in right relations with our places and with each other in ways that regenerate our intellectual, cultural, land-based traditions every day as part of the deep substances of life. So often school has structured epistemic erasure, the kinds of violence, um, the competition that was mentioned earlier, uh, damage and dispossession in so many of our homes and our communities. But instead for us as a collective, we were interested in how schools could, could be medicine. And specifically in this case, the ways in which a sister space, what we call a sister space um, in Thailand grew from the Tutoria movement in Mexico, Mexico, and how that could be healing and regenerative for indigenous families and their lands. And to those ends, we had to ask ourselves really hard questions. Like what would it take for schools to contribute to young people's and families thriving? Who should teach? Um, what stories are we encouraging students to tell? Where should they learn? And who should our children be and become? And we had to practice exercising indigenous educational sovereignty rather than having those questions be defined for us. And that's kind of the big space that we've been up to in the last eight years. Our paper, Making Relatives, is based in our ongoing work at Sahasa Siksa, a private welfare educational school based in Chiang Rai City. We have around 2,500 students from kindergarten to high school from 12 distinct indigenous groups. We wrote this paper to show that the future of education, indigenous future are not fancy words or idea, but they are lived out and created by everyday people, everyday historical actors, parents, teachers, children. It is possible. We did it as Sahasa Siksa. Making making relatives um, as foregrounds the relational dimensions of traveling reforms or sister spaces and how making relatives across differences or even when that might be uncomfortable can occur within moments of interaction and longer design iterations. First, as we grew this um, sister space at Sahasak Siksao, we show that the quality, the relational qualities of our relations across Thailand and Mexico um, and within our collective at Sahasak was what drove um, our intellectual and political work at school. Okay, so through stay in relation with each other at multiple scales uh, over time, we learn to see and talk with children as full as and complex beings with wise knowledges and ethical and political insights. Um, we learn to create spaces at school to practice and to regenerate family science, philosophies and languages, the dynamic of, of wisdom that offer perspective on what it means to live well. We learn to be in right relationship with indigenous families and lands and true staying in relationship with each other. Indigenous life will not fade, but 
be strengthened into the future. It's been eight years since we began and we are still going and we are still learning. This, this work takes time and that's what makes it beautiful. Second, in the paper, we animate a student-teacher dialogue um, to attend to these micro moments of interaction as sites of possibility, social critique, and imagination. We illustrate this with um, B, a student who was in the position of teacher and the ways that he engaged in conversation with his teacher, Kru Jan, about Hmong cloth dyeing, an important social practice from his home. And within their unfolding dialogue, we see how narratives of capitalistic production and modernity are often entangled within the social, political, and axiological landscape of school and are honestly prevalent in our, in our field of, of education and education reform. We see this in how Ku Jen asks with genuine curiosity, why should we still dye cloth by hand? And now if, if you know, we can just go out and buy it and it only takes a second. Enacting relational ethics for us doesn't mean just agreeing, but really searching within the self to engage in dialogic processes. And in response to her question, T brilliantly introduces other axiological con considerations when harvesting dyes from the natural world, where embodied making and materiality offer a diverse sets of, sets of possibilities for understanding the uses, purposes, and experiences of cloth dyeing, and suggests that there are reciprocal relationships when we um, with plants and when we put our bodies to work, not only in the, that the quality of the work is better when we sometimes make things by hand, but the act of creation can actually help a lot of things too. Crew that Jen then names this as the creativity of those before us. And Thee concludes by saying, my ancestors knew physics and mathematics. They may not have written it down, but they knew it. So in the context of Thai national education policies and global education reforms, colonized relations in schooling, we can see operating at different and various scales. It's ideological, structural, and socially constructed in moment-to-moment -moment interactions in how teachers and adults see, hear, and treat students' ideas and cultural practices. However, these hegemonic relations of power are also never complete or foreclosed. They can be undone in interaction by living and enacting new possible worlds. Young people like Thi, their families through the stories that we encourage them to tell, and the teachers who open their hearts to be transformed illustrate those openings. And for us, their dialogue illustrates the power and the importance of studying um, micro moments of interaction in relations to macro forms of social and historical change. Finally, we hope that this um, paper illustrates how big macro forms of political change are necessary, but often insufficient, unless we learn to be with each other differently. Um, to be with each other in more open, gentle, reciprocal ways. Social change, we believe, requires learning. Um, thinking with the field of the learning sciences, um, we think our field is ripe to pay closer attention to the processes of learning, the processes of the poetic, the processes of making and being together. How might we learn to do this? What conditions might we need to create? What might, might we make relatives and stay in relation to this hard work every day in interaction? So if we truly take seriously that all learning is political and ethical. These questions are political and ethical questions. And perhaps living out these relations with each other and the rest of the living world are actually part of the forms um, that are created and a foundational purpose of comparison. And making relatives could round out ideas of comparison so that the relational isn't just a means to you know, high, achieving high or, or, or feeling safe at school, but that the relational is actually an end in itself that we are after. Okay, this work would not have been possible without each of co-authors here. We intentionally wanted this to be a co-author's piece and this award is all the more me the meaningful and special because of it. We are thrilled for you to read the article and continue to be in dialogue with you around uh, some of our ideas in the paper. So please feel free to reach out. Okay, as we mentioned earlier, 
this work is ongoing and we are in the process of organizing another learning fiesta and a trans indigenous conference across Mexico and Thailand. So you also can help us out. If you would like to come to Thailand, please come and let us know. You are very welcome. <laughs> yeah, come join us. Um, uh, let's spend each other, spend time in each other's places and, and learn together. Um, thank you, um, you know, again to um, Dr. Supriya, um, Dr. Kara Janigan, um, Dr. Keita Takayama, um, the entire committee, um, Dr. Elizabeth Sumida Waman, um, who edited the um, Comparative Education, Indigenous Education Special Issue, um, to Susan McClellan in the executive office that was helping to organize all of this, um, our family, friends, allies who read versions of this paper, the editors at CR, and to all the other authors um, in 2022 that were pushing the field in their own ways. So, Awija, thank you so much. We're very, we're so grateful. Thank you all so very much. It is an honor to hear more about your work. And I would encourage people to um, read the CER for its wide variety of epistemologies, methodologies, um, the critiques. Um, it is a wonderful resource for if you are not currently reading it. Um, and just want to thank everyone for being here today, and especially to Professor Keita Takayama for their work and Kara Janigan for her work on this as well. And hope that you all will celebrate this award and continue the good work. It's an honor and privilege to have heard from you all this morning. Thank you.